Hey, what it is, Danny X. We're here with uh, Cap Chatfield again. And uh, I think he's talking about atheists or something. Let's check it out. This, this is one of the biggest mic drops I've ever seen. One famous argument that people have against Christianity, I used to have this argument, is that God, if he's so good, as the Bible says, as Christians say, why does he allow so many people to be killed? Okay, right off the bat. So, so when you say God, you are referring to a consensus definition of God, okay? Which is what gets people so fucked up to begin with. Because um, God is everything. So, so when you try to separate and divide God, though, into good and evil, uh, that's what starts fucking people up. That's when you start, that, that's when you start, you know, people are like, oh, bad things happen. You know, but, but when you accept that God is truly everything... And everything is God, it makes a lot more sense. <laughs> In the Old Testament, if God's so good, why does he allow stillbirths to happen? If God's so good, why does he allow cancer to happen? This is a question that Christians have had. Okay, creation is the expression of complete freedom. And within that complete freedom, you are going to have every variable, okay? And within all those different variables, you're going to have situations and circumstances which... Uh, do not seem uh, uh, conducive to you or your well-being. And this is why so many uh, Christians end up feeling like uh, God is because the, the, they, they are uh, trying to understand uh, God f from, from a limited perspective. And, and that perspective is enforced by the followers of Abraham. All right. The answer for people for thousands of years. We should be well equipped to answer this question. But this man, Frank. And, and that's a good point. Yeah, Christians have been working on their retorts and rebuttals for thousands of years. You know, that's why a lot of people have a hard time standing up to them, which is uh, part of what I'm doing right here. Is I'm standing my ground on a different perspective here. All right. Roll with it, chat. Explains an answer to this question or really a rebuttal to this question in such a brilliant way that challenges everything that the secular world has to say about the goodness of God and them, people, being the arbiters of truth. Check out the video. Before we jump into the video, let me introduce myself. My name is Cap Chatfield. Welcome to the channel. What's up, bro? I'm Dane Darklight. Welcome to the channel. And I create content for the kingdom and train creators to... I create content for myself because I am the kingdom, as are we all. We are all extensions of the kingdom. As is imbued uh, through, through our being, we are sentient singularities. Do the same. If you wanna learn more about that, you can click the link in the description of this video. It takes you to my website. Now, let's hop into the video. I was at a university not long ago where a young woman said this from the microphone. I can't believe in the God of the Bible because he kills people, especially in the Old Testament. And let's talk about that right there. He kills people. Thou shalt not kill. Hypocrisy. We'll be getting into that. And I think that's immoral. So I asked her this question. I said, where do you stand? No, no, no. What do you mean? I think that's immoral. Let's go to the, you think that's immoral. <laughs> I, I mean, y'all, y'all, with your commandments and all, right off the bat, thou shalt not kill, but yet God killed all kinds of people? Hmm. Okay, so this is where we get into the holy murder, okay? This is where we get into the hypocrisy of, you know, it's okay if I do this for this reason, but if you do the exact same thing, uh, but I say for it's a different reason, it's not okay. I'm a life issue. Are you pro-life or pro-abortion? And she said, oh, I'm pro-abortion. And I asked her this question. I said, why is it that when God... I'm just pro-choice, and that extends to everything. Um as is our birthright given to us through our life. <clears throat> Plays God in the Bible and decides who lives and dies. He's immoral. But when you play God and decide... See, I, I, that, that's because most people have a very, very limited per perception of what God is. Um, God is not Im immoral whatsoever because God is everything. Everything is permitted. <clears throat> ...who lives and dies regarding abortion... Somehow that's your moral right. Can you justify that for me? Boom! Wow! And for all you people out there 
mostly ladies that are like, I'm not killing a baby. It's not alive yet. Come on, let's just admit it. You're killing the baby. You, you know, you, let's at least start from right there. And fr from right there, that admission, then you can make your decision. Okay. But yeah, you're, you're killing the baby. Oh, did you catch that? Did you, did you gather what he was saying there? So many people today, and I used to be this way. So, hey, no judgment on you if you're, if you're in that place right now. I love it when they say no judgment, but that's all Christians do is judge while they sit back there and say the only one that can judge is God, but yet they're all constantly running around judging. But now, now I got a totally different outlook on judgment. Judgment is absolutely imperative for one's survival. Everyone needs to judge. Not only need they to everyone does judge constantly in every situation, in every moment of their life, okay? Our own judgment, which all falls down on our consciousness and awareness, is the power of expression that was given to us, okay? So, um, you know, Christians like to have this double-edged sword thing about judgment, you know? But but I, I see judgment for what it is. It is absolutely vital and necessary for, for one's not only survival, but, but thriving in life. Roll with it. But you and I, we need to look in the mirror because when we put God on trial, like... We need to do some mirror exercises, huh? Let's roll with it. When we put God on trial, oh, okay, so, so God, see, see th this is like a, a projection and a reflection from a lot of people because they, they are tired of the, the perceived uh, trial of God being enforced on them by all y'all, okay? J j just clarifying things right here as to the uh, uh, motivations of people saying that. <clears throat> that. When we say, if I was God, I wouldn't do that. Even Christians say, we are all God. We are all God. We are all uh, sentient singularity. Um, okay, so so you got the all spark, which, which was created by the darkness. Okay, and within the all spark is is the infinite light seed. Okay, it is one and it is infinite. It, it is one and it is you know zero. It, it is everything all at once, and that is what we are. Okay, we are a uh, infinitely compounded uh, meta consciousness, but within itself, like like. Take, take ourselves, for example. We think of ourselves as singular, yet we are com composed of, I'll, it's not infinite, but it's a lot. It's, it's a bunch of cells, it, tiny individual cells who, who, them, who each themselves feel that, that they are um, individual and singular and go about their own little thing. But, but all the cells within our body come together. Those little consciousnesses combine to form the consciousness which we call ourselves, okay? And that in itself is a symbol of creation. That is a symbol of uh, the godhood, all right? As was given to us. That to this day. When I put out videos about difficult things that Jesus said or difficult things that God said in the Old Testament, he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Jesus didn't come to abolish the law and the prophets, but to fulfill it. We need to understand that God's character hasn't changed. Our circumstance and how we stand before him changes because of what he did on the cross for us by sending Jesus to die on our behalf. He sent him to die? See, see that's what I'm saying. Sin and death, that's what y'all are all about, really. Um, I, I would say that God sent Jesus to live for us. I, I wouldn't say he sent him to die for us. He, he sent Jesus to show us how to live, not show us how to die. I, I mean, like all the emphasis put on death and sin by you guys, it's hilarious. That's why I call you guys sin worshipers. Let's roll with it. That's true, but <laughs> we need to understand God is the ultimate judge of the universe here, not us, yet. No, no, no. We we are all God, and we are all the ultimate judges of our own universes, okay? So so check it out. You got um, the earth itself, okay, which is its own dimension, okay? Then every single sentient singularity, which is a person— their perception and their perspective creates its own dimension w within that original prime dimension, okay? So therefore, we are all creating our own reality as we observe it, okay? <clears throat> we feel like we have the moral superiority and we can <laughs> say what's right and what's wrong. And Everyone does. I, I mean, and that is the the point of our of our consciousness is to de develop our own uh, uh, moral superiority. You know that that's the entire uh, well. well it, and the the point of developing the moral 
I mean, it's not even about superiority. It's just developing your own self, developing yourself into such a, a strong uh, a state that, that you induce the ascension, okay? Uh, ascension is uh, consciously uh, um, pushing your awareness into ever higher energetic states, okay? Now, now check it out. The highest energetic state is complete oneness, and within complete oneness, that there is absolutely no separation. And and uh, okay, you're like, oh, that that sounds great, right? To a lot of people, that's heaven. But what that is is that that that's the infinite dark void. That's the infinite dark void, and the dark void created the light in order in order to condense into all all the uh, 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 dimensions and universes. I call it the omniverse, of which we all contribute to. Let's roll with it. Home. Ultimately, we can judge God. That's really what the culture is doing. I want to share with you a scripture, though. Yeah, yeah. Well, everyone judges God. Everyone ju because is it God you're judging, or is it people's perception of God that they are trying to impose on you that they are judging? Okay, that is the question. That's really going to bring to light how this is all. God knew about all of this. God knew that we would respond this way before he even created the foundations of the heavens and the earth. Look what it says in Romans chapter 1. Yeah, of course God knows everything. I mean, he created everything. But I find it very interesting how, you know, when it comes to God created everything, but then all of a sudden there's these, uh, you know, war against God and whatnot. I don't believe in that shit. I don't believe in that shit whatsoever, that God cannot be attacked. <clears throat> Verses 18 onward, it says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. God's the judge, right? He's the arbiter of truth. He decides what's true. He decides what's right and wrong. And he holds us. In okay, and uh, check it out. Modern Christianity is very different from early Christianity. A lot of things were changed. A lot of things were modified by man in order to manipulate their fellow man, okay? Which is the current state of Christianity today accountable not the other way around so it says that the wrath of god is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness because what may be known of god is manifest in them for god has shown it to them for since the creation of the world his invisible attributes are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and godhead so that they are without excuse because although they, although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts. Professing to be wise, they became fools and changed, check this out, the glory of the incorrupt into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals. And an image like the cross? Huh? You know, worship no idols, but y'all y'all love that cross, don't you? Just saying. Creeping things. Pause right there. Do you see what's happening? Man rebels from God, rebels against God. Man there is no rebellion against God. It, it can't happen. Every possible path is God's path. Every path leads to God, okay? Now, oh, where you have the contention is where you have um, a, a certain follower... Uh, of God who tries to impose their perception of God on others. And is suppressing the truth that he's put into and rebels from God rebels against God. Man is suppressing the truth that he's put into our hearts. He's already given us a conscience. He's wrote, he's written his law on our hearts before we even said yes, and we know that stealing's wrong. We know that murder's wrong. We know that adultery is wrong. We know all these things are wrong inherently, but we suppress the truth. We deny that there's even a creator. Although, as I just read, as we just read right there, all of creation, the entire cosmos, points to the fact that somebody had to design this. This couldn't be. Absolutely agreed. But, you know, I'm definitely not an atheist, so. An accident. I want to ask you a quick question right now. If you believe that the universe was some sort of cosmic mistake, that everything fell into place like this randomly and through chaos over the course of billions of years, let me just ask you a practical question. Not 
randomly through chaos, specifically through chaos. But but this doesn't apply to me though. Roll with it, chat. If you were to put a whole basket of laundry into a dryer, how long would it take for that basket of laundry for that laundry uh, that dryer? If you opened it up, how long would it take for all of those clothes that you threw in there to come out perfectly folded? How many times has anybody in human history? Christians love their analogies. With all the, the dryers that we have on planet Earth right now, probably at least a few billion. With all those dryers, has anybody ever seen a pile of clothes get turned around to the point where they came out in perfect order? I mean, it. so my question is, if we understand intuitively that that randomness to that degree now one's um consent that there is a god does not automatically uh, uh validate your perception of god okay <clears throat> just does not produce order how can we how can we explain the intricacy of the universe molecular structure the way that this this Earth is perfectly distanced from the sun so that we can sustain life. And it moves just fast enough for us to keep moving around the sun. And for and the moon, the, the moon is placed just perfectly to, to carry the, the tides. And without the tides, uh, the, there, there might be life, but it wouldn't be the, the flourishing life that we know today. The seasons to change and create a whole ecosystem of life. How does that happen without a designer? I'm going on a rabbit trail here. But here's what I want to here's what I want to finish with this with. <sighs> Did you see what it said right there? Professing to be wise, they became fools. People became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man. God in the beginning of the Bible clearly states that you and I are created in his image, not the other way around. But that's exactly what humans do. That's exactly what's in our nature. So we are created by the creator in his image, yet we are not creators. <clears throat> we look at God and we say, I would never do that. If I, would, if I were God, I would never do that. That's why you're not God. That's why you and I are God. We are all God. Because we don't have the capacity to, to think at the level of wisdom that he does. We don't have the capacity to create a standard. We do have the capacity. We absolutely have the capacity. It's our birthright, actually. Just like it was Jesus' path, everyone has the ability to walk that same path. The the path of ascension, the past path of personal enlightenment. ...of truth and actually live by it. Christians are, are mocked and judged for being the biggest hypocrites on planet Earth. And I wouldn't disagree that Christians can, can be uh, hypocritical. We absolutely can. But you know who are, like... Who the biggest hypocrites are? Everybody. The people, like the people that he's talking. Humankind, yes, in general, uh, absent any religion, there's going to be hypocrisy. Absolutely. About right here, and hey, I'm not judging, I'm not casting shame, but I do want to point out the irony that you, we have a whole generation that wants to. We got a shame slinger. Shame slinger. No. Oh, okay. Judge God, <laughs> but won't themselves live according to the standards that they. They themselves say are good and true. And if your truth is relative and truth in general is relative and morality is relative, then who do we have? Like, how do we even have the right to say that God is wrong? I agree. It's all relative. I agree. I agree. Absolutely. Anyway, right? Uh, because I do say uh, uh, truth is relative, and it's relative depending on each each individual sentient singularity. That is the basis for its own truth, okay? If truth is relative, then you declaring that there is no God in and of itself is a relative statement. I'm going on and on here. Guys, I love... I like the cut of your jib, boy. <laughs> Keep rolling with it. I love me a true believer. See, I... I'm I'm only commenting on on your videos, uh, chat, because I like you. Like I, I only got time for for stuff I like. You know, like I'm not gonna be responding to 
like someone that annoys the fuck out of me like that living waters dude <laughs> i i did <laughs> is it ox patronizing as hell down to everyone you know i i just i couldn't take too much of that shit but uh cap talks to you like a person i like that <clears throat> how we do not need to be afraid of questions we don't need to be afraid of science i believe that what we need to absolutely not science and religion are intrinsically connected okay if there's somewhere where there's perceived to be a disconnect that that is that is only displaying one's lack of perception okay a a, a perception that that is adequate um that, to, to unify the theologies see happen in the days that we're in right now is we need a church that isn't afraid of stretching their intellect of loving the lord their god with not just to their heart or their soul or their strength, but now, now the church is anytime you as a person realize your inherent divinity. Okay, that is church. Uh, absent any building, uh, building uh, a building, a a, a uh, that is they got nothing to do with it. Okay, we are the church. We carry the church within us. <clears throat> with their minds, you and I. God's given us a brain. He wants us to use this brain to worship him. He wants us to use this brain to reason with people out in the world, just like Paul did. Paul went all over Greece and reasoned with people to help explain the way of the kingdom of God and that Jesus is the only way, the only truth, and the only life. And no. And that's and that's what um, they, y'all, use to um, uh, manipulate people with because... I believe that too. Jesus is the way, but not the way y'all say, because we all have that inner truth within us. We don't. We don't have to be dictated to by your uh, holy book. But he comes to the Father except through him. You and I are we gonna? And I believe that in the which is um, intrinsically woven into every sentient singularity every single co-creator of the godhood has the christ consciousness which is th the way uh, uh to ascend to the godhood okay lean in are we going to be afraid of these questions are we going to say no i, I don't want to discuss those things i, I don't want to stand up for my faith guys if jesus is the truth the truth is on our side all truth belongs to god we need to. Uh, true believer, man. I, I really appreciate a true believer. Because there's so many fake believers. I, I guess I like true believers so much because of all the fucking fake believers. Be more fearless. We need to be more courageous. We need to be more bold with the truth. Crusade! We need a crusade! <laughs> we need to start killing some motherfuckers that don't agree with us. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh I, I'm sorry, y'all. Yeah, <laughs> I'll leave that call for you guys to do here in a couple years. Not out of arrogance, but with humility and love, because the truth sets people free. Father, lead us in truth. Open our minds. Give us courage as believers to express the truth, to have discourse with people. And God, we pray that that you would awaken the hearts and minds of those who think that you are foolish before it's too late. I agree with that prayer. I agree with that prayer. All right. We got a common prayer grow going. I can roll with that one. But now where I would push back a little bit is, um, of course, he is inferring uh, um, the, the uh, Christian and followers of Abraham's perception of God. That it, not act the actual divine connection within ourselves. That, that is what is constantly glossed over by religions because as soon as uh, <clears throat> as soon as uh, I, that takes away their power. When people realize they have becomes abundantly apparent that uh, the uh, superficially hoarding and insidiously hoarding the, the power uh, of the sovereign individuals which support it. Okay. Before they cross into eternity and wished that they received the forgiveness that you paid a high price for them to have on that cross. In Jesus' name. Amen. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Share this video. You demand, chat. That's what I think.
<laughs> That's why you're probably gonna be seeing more of me, dude. If you was just annoying as fuck, I I'd just go on by ya. <laughs> uh, but, but I like you, bro. Roll with it. Like it and please subscribe for more. We'll see you in the next one. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, Daniac. So that was uh. Uh, God Light wants you to read believer. a Bible verse for him today. If you feel distant from the Lord, it's probably because you haven't been reading Bible. It's probably because you misunderstand what, you what God really is. Or you struggle to understand. Fuck ass honkies. Alright. Alright, alright, alright. Dark light out. Dark light out. Roll out, roll out. Appreciate y'all for rolling up the dark light. Thank you.